what's up what's up guys it's stinky armpit base back at it again i'm in the lab baby oh yeah all up in the lab this is a quick video tutorial on a do-it-yourself two-in-one ground or power connector and you can modify it uh, some of the best bang for the buck an easy way to get loud and get lots of juice is to go to home depot and do some snooping around or think outside the box now this is a composite aluminum highly conductive uh, it's an al9cu that's the type of aluminum uh, very very common in uh, you know home and industrial applications now there's a ton of great companies out there who make a killing on making uh, custom adapters two-in-one connectors you know angled inputs whatnot like toolmaker.com and they make a killing and they make awesome awesome products but if you don't have you know forty dollars for a two-in-one uh, input connector for your amp for power and ground or you know big distribution blocks uh, for your batteries and, and bus bars and all that uh, easy easy way to make them i got other videos i'm gonna upload going over that but as far as the distribution block for two-in-one inputs for your amp power or ground or just to have multiple inputs uh, that accept all the way up to two watt gauge uh, for your batteries which is kind of tough when you only have a couple posts um, this video is for you now what is this guy this guy again is from home depot this is in actually the uh, industrial uh, electronics aisle now you get two of these guys in a pack for around 349 this is again a uh, highly conductive aluminum and even right here on it it's got printed it says let's see if it zooms in uh, one on gauge 214 the thing is is this is what i run in my car right now it's from weldingsupply.com it's actually wet welding cable highly insulated high strand high flexible it's less than two dollars a foot big ups to weldingsupply.com this is a true one on gauge right here i have all the way from industrial application uh, not high strand low strand not flexible at all uh, two watt gauge i have high strand flexible two watt gauge i have what appears to be either a you know, traditional zero gauge or even a really really small cheap one out gauge all the way to like a one or two gauge now the way this guy comes out of the box this hole right here my fingers and see this hole right here they're saying that guy accepts up to one odd gauge I don't know what kind of one odd gauge they're running but the one odd gauge I see for car audio or welding wire check this out not even close see that I'm gonna zoom in see what I mean not even close I'm sitting there pressing it in you see all that extra copy you're not able to use hell if you, if you ever have an input that you're having issues with and you can twist and put it in and try to make it small or whatever, you have all this sticking out, you're not even utilizing uh, the gauge of the copper wiring and getting all the juice or the potential for ground uh, that you're needing to. Hell, you might as well save money and get a smaller gauge wire. Might as well run something like this guy. Boom, see how that goes in? Bam. Goes in perfect. And that's what they consider one out gauge. There is a little bit of space there. But... I got buddies like Larry Tolman, Old Base 40. Check him out on YouTube. He's got awesome videos. Awesome, awesome videos. I think he just installed 4 watt gauge. Now, when you see 4 watt gauge, even compared to what I thought was big 2 watt gauge, uh, 4 watt gauge is like as big as my kneecap. See this kneecap? Of course, 4 watt gauge he runs has uh, less bruises for motorcycle accidents and scar tissue and a lot less hair. 4 watt gauge is like the top of this guy. You can't modify this guy to run 4 rock gauge, but by slowly, slowly going up, progressively in your drill bits, ideally using a drill press. Uh, I actually just use wood on the floor and put this guy between my feet. I think I didn't stab my feet in my drill bit. You can get all the way to what fits a uh, one rock gauge. Now this fits mine beautifully. If you notice right here, you're still utilizing your threads. Now inherently, the bigger gauge you go, the more these guys are going to connect. See how thin that wall is? In the grand scheme of things, not really a big deal because it's not like you're going to have power and ground here. You're either going to put this in your amp or use it on your chassis or your battery or something like that. And it's going to be the same. Either all power or all ground. Not really a big deal. But what is a big deal is because the larger gauge you go, if you notice, see how it starts slowly uh, chopping through those threads? 
you get less and less threats. So from my own personal experience from stinky armpit, armpit base officially, I would go up to half an inch drill bit size max. You can see this guy fits in there perfectly. You're gonna wanna use a, uh, a clamp or something when you're doing this. This is really, really soft uh, composite aluminum. So when it starts grabbing, it's gonna be flying everywhere. You can't really use this gauge for anything. Well, you can for smaller applications, but if you're trying to push heavy, heavy watts, you need a big boy wire. Now, after you get done, after you drill it through, of course you're gonna see this uh, line through there because you're making this hole bigger and you're gonna drill through that, not really a big deal. You're still able to use your thread, see that? Let's see if we can get you up through here, let's see. See, it still comes through, still got your thread, so it's all good. Of course, we haven't even modified this size, this side up here. When we compare, I'm trying to stick this one knot gauge through this side. See, very, very doable. I have this all through my car right now using these guys. The beautiful thing about it is if you don't have an extra 40 to 50 bucks for custom uh, inputs on your amps, when your amps came from the factory with a single power or ground input, you can utilize these guys. Now on a Hyphonics BRX 2000, which is rated 2000 watts at one ohm, it only has a single input and ground, but by modifying one of these guys, I'm giving it essentially, well theoretically, twice the amount of juice. I cannot explain to you um, how, how much better this guy responds after the bass sits there and crushes it. And yeah, I've got AGMs and one knot gauge everywhere. See, I'm even using it down here on my battery. Now you can use it in its stock form in your battery like this by just drilling both these sides out bigger and by drilling a bigger hole in right here. See, of course I've got the studs coming up um, so I can just sit there and put a nut on it. That's one way of using a lot more of these guys to get a lot more inputs and outputs in your battery. And see, I'm using them all, all over the place. Right here, that's also from Home Depot. It's uh, done kind of sloppy, but nothing's touching, so it's straight. See, and I'm also using it on my inverted one down there. Now this is done kind of in haste, done kind of sloppy. See how it's coming through? It doesn't matter that it's coming through because there's a gap in between there where my on-off uh, remote bar goes. But by simply using this method right here, and you can do, you get a pack of two for 350, you drill them out, and uh, use these guys. I can't tell you how much more consistent my amps are and uh, how much more uh, juice you get and how much more responsive they are. Now I've checked it with my uh, oscilloscope my digital multimeter, all that good stuff, and it's it's pretty much night and day. If you saw my amps, uh, you had a power in this side and a ground in this side. Well, obviously, this huge connector right here with uh, this pre-drilled hole, when they're new, that's not going to fit in there. It's got a left, basically, see where this metal is still showing? It's got a nub that goes up in there, where a one-hot or zero gauge would go in, and then on the other side, of course, it's going to be inverted the other side. So imagine my finger is where you're going to cut off the metal. That nub goes in there. All you have to do, guys, is drill through here, take a hacksaw, cut down the middle if your right input's big enough, or I know on, uh, on mine, right where this side of the uh, pre-drilled hole is, I cut a line straight down. So on my ground, for example, on my amp right now, Imagine where my finger is, you've already cut that metal off, or just see this line right here? Imagine you just cut this block right here to the right off. You're just going to have this one nub sticking out. And you could even drill a smaller hole right here, where your torque screw, where your input on your amp will go and have a place to torque down. You've got two one odd or 2 odd gauge wires going to one input. Dude, it's night and day. And for $3.50, Per amp that have single, you can run duals. I know there's companies out there selling them for $30 and $40, but dude, it's easy. Now, if you have uh, one that goes up in the middle and uh, your power and ground are really separated, you can do it through the middle. You can even utilize this hole right here. But 
considering this is highly conductive, it's extremely affordable to do. But dude, I don't, I mean, I save probably $35. Let's just assume tool, tool maker, whoever does them for $40 a piece. They might use aircraft aluminum. There's not a huge gap in this kind of aluminum, which is made for conductivity. Than aircraft it's not like they're doing it out of solid gold or out of like the best copper that you know Moses had hidden under King Solomon's tomb in you know 16,000 AD or BC or whatever it's not like that dude so this is an easy easy way to save money if you guys have any questions uh, hit me up in the comment section below